This video is brought to you by Trend Micro's Cleaner One Pro. With all the tutorial videos I've done recently, one might conclude that I speak fluent Mac. Every once in a while, however, I stumble upon tips and tricks that I've never heard of that make me feel as if I speak gobbledygook. Let me show you my most recent macOS tips and tricks discoveries that you might not have heard of. Warming up with three finger drag. This is a trackpad feature that works on both the trackpad of the MacBook as well as the external trackpad if you have one. When managing and moving around Windows, things might get cumbersome, especially when using just a trackpad as you have to press and hold on the trackpad with the index finger and then practice yoga moves with the other finger. When you enable three finger drag, you just use your three fingers to move things around, avoiding the extra step of having to press first and then hold. Three finger drag works everywhere, not just managing windows. If you work on an image, for example, you can move around the selected objects as expected. And this is where you start to appreciate this feature. If you haven't heard of this feature and to enable it, you have to think like Apple differently by not placing it in the logical trackpad settings, but instead in accessibility, pointer control, trackpad options, enable dragging. Really? Why? Let's talk about a hidden option that should be available by default on the Mac. You know how you can see the list of speakers and output devices when clicking on the sound menu? Where are the microphones? By default, to change your input, you'll have to go to system preferences, sound, and input, which honestly is just too much of a hassle. Don't do that anymore. Instead, click on the sound menu by holding the option button to also reveal the available microphone choices. Before we move on to the next facepalm tip, one tip or more like a procedure that is a best practice for any Mac user is properly uninstalling apps. One way to do that is to use Trend Micro's Cleaner One Pro. Cleaner One Pro is an all-in-one disk cleaning tool with a built-in application manager that helps me remove and uninstall third-party apps correctly, eliminating any trace of residue library files. That's one small part of Cleaner One Pro's arsenal of maintenance features. I often use the toolbar, which gives me a glance at my computer's memory usage and junk accumulation, which I can clean with a simple press of a button. Along with it, I can use the disk map tool to accurately pinpoint and figure out what is taking up most of my hard drive space and adequately clean up everything. Cleaner One Pro is a valuable tool that can help fix all the problems in just one click. Check out the first link in the description below to install Cleaner One Pro for free. Next up is refined brightness in media control. Did you know that when you press on the volume up on the Mac, you have 16 little square increments to increase the volume? Yes, I counted them. Why 16, by the way? Anyway, sometimes when watching something, those 16 increments might not be precise enough. Instead of going to the sound menu and trying to fine tune the volume, you can simply press shift plus option and start increasing or decreasing the volume to achieve the optimal result. Shift plus option also works with your brightness level as well. I'm sure by now all of you are very interested to know, so I'll tell you. Using shift plus option gives you 64 levels instead of 16. I think uh, something's wrong with me. While on the topic of brightness control, I want to point out that 64 is the max, but if you have a Pro Display XDR 14 or 16 inch MacBook Pro, you are eligible to more brightness. And I sounded like a law firm commercial. See, Mac OS keeps the brightness around 500 in its tops unless the content you're consuming or creating calls for more. Only then you get to see the full potential of the 1600 nits beast of a display. So if you're sitting around and working on a document in bright sunlight, the only thing that can make you feel better is reading the specs of your 1600 nits display, knowing that you can only use 500 nits. No more. The Vivid app allows you to double your standard brightness on demand, which comes in very handy on those sporadic but crucial moments when you really need to see what you're actually working on. For the people that are worried about long-term harm to the laptop, according to Apple, the Pro Display XDR can sustain 1000 nits of brightness across the full screen. This means that a Pro can edit an HDR photograph or video with the entire frame at 1000 nits of brightness indefinitely. So the only victim here might be your battery charge, but really, 
that's not something that you want to blast your face all day long anyway. Okay, so I'm a designer by trade and as such, normal people needs like converting or optimizing images have always resulted in using pro-grade software for such simple tasks. But what happens if you don't want to use Affinity Photo or let's say Photoshop and you simply want to optimize or change the image format for uploading reasons. Well, it turned out that you can do that on the Mac out of the box. Just right click on an image, go to quick actions and then convert image. From there, you can reduce the size of an image or simply change its format from let's say PNG to JPEG. And guess what? I now use that too sometimes. While on the topic of images, I didn't know you can actually select a bunch of images and generate a PDF file combining them. To do that, simply select all the images and right click, go to quick actions and create PDF and voila. See, I am a long time Mac user and I used to work in a newspaper where I had to merge multiple images and pages into PDFs. And back in that day, that wasn't an option and there were special tools for that purpose. Now that's part of Mac OS. Very cool. This reminds me that you can create PDFs by combining images and PDFs as well. No Word documents though. There's no option to choose the size of the PDF in terms of optimization either, just FYI. The next tip that I have is something that I could have used way too many times. I'm talking about the ability to record your iPhone screen with QuickTime on the Mac. The way I've done it so far was to use the built-in iPhone screen recording feature, which then I would airdrop to my Mac for integration. Still an option, but the sacrifice here would be the recording icon on the top. If you want to avoid that and save time of airdropping later, simply connect your iPhone to the Mac and then open QuickTime. Then, from the menu, choose New Movie Recording from the little drop down right next to the recording button. Select your iPhone as a source. Press record and thank me by leaving a like on this video and subscribing. By the way, if you don't enjoy this video, let me know in the comments why and we'll become friends. I promise. For the longest of time, I've been enjoying the ability to sign documents using the previous built-in annotation options. With the help of the iPad, I was now able to create more accurate representations of my signature. Here's how it works. In Preview, open Tools, Annotate Signature, Manage Signatures, then select Create Signature and select the third tab, iPad or iPhone and choose your device. Now with the precision of the Apple Pencil, things look a lot better. Okay, so let me give you some quick tips that you might find very handy. Ready? When you press the F3 on the Mac, you take advantage of mission control viewing all your active windows. By pressing Command plus F3, you do something much better, which is to reveal your desktop. If you use that a lot, you can create a hot corner for this action, where when you hit the bottom right, for example, you can always reveal the desktop. When previewing items in Finder with space, hold the space while previewing them and once you're done, release it. This will save you an additional step of hitting the space bar again. One of my personal favorites that I should have known years ago is using command and up and down arrow to go in and out of folders. This saves so much time when working and browsing between projects and folders and it's just amazing. When you open Safari, press command plus L to immediately go to the address bar. Let's try this. Press command plus space to open Spotlight. Type SAF and press enter, then command plus L. Tell me that you don't feel like an actual pro right now. While on the topic of Safari, command plus Z opens your last closed Safari tab. Next, you can rearrange your menu bar icons by holding command and dragging them around. If you don't use an app like Bartender, this might be the ideal free way to achieve a better organizational balance in your menu apps. Next, press and hold option while right clicking on the finder. On the bottom, you'll see an option to relaunch the Finder if it freezes, for example. And if you do the same for any of the other apps in the dock, you'll be able to immediately force quit them. Next, if you find these tips a bit intimidating and you're fairly new to the Mac, check out my beginner's guide here, where I cover all the basics when it comes to Mac OS. Next, subscribe to the channel. And as always, it's been an absolute pleasure. This is E, over and out.